Hello friends, it's Luke the Gamer Duke. Today in Diablo 2 Resurrected, I need to gear for hell mode. I'm throwing 24 hours at random nightmare terror zones to see if they can produce anything worthwhile. Do they? Let's go find out. Before we begin, I'm rocking 366% magic fine with basically my entire inventory dedicated to it. Only my weapons and a few charms are omitted. I'm looking for mid to higher end exceptionals and obviously elites, so let's get into it. In just the second hour, the wheels already began turning in the Durance. Mephisto dropped the set Bramble Mitts. Laying of Hands, offering solid fire res, 20% added attack speed, and 350% damage versus undead is a solid number in those certain areas. The reinforced mace also fell. Dan Goon's teaching, which has great attack speed and is part of a pretty good set, but minimum damage output is kinda lacking. A rare ogre maul with plus one to barb skills and some life leech. And randomly from this rack dropped black leech blade bill. Which kind of sucks, actually. However, in the next area, I was gifted the item that keeps on giving. Geed's Charm, with a solidly rolled outcome. 160 being the max gold and 40 being the max magic fine. Which will now jump my magic fine to 402. But that was actually all for this area. Continuing in Act 5 with the Plateau, out popped the unique Yari. Own Sundan, which is a pretty damn good weapon. Crushing Blow will take you further than you think, the damage is solid, and a lot can be done with those three sockets. Keeping it going in Hour 5 in the Bazaar, I found another good and out the gate. The unique Divine Scepter. Hand of the Blessed Light with plus two to Paladin skills, plus two more to Fist, plus four extra to Holy Bolt, 15% mana regen, and four to Light Radius. This thing is a Casting Pally's wet dream. Going back to the Crystalline Passage in the Frozen River, I came across K. Hagen's Wisdom. Q. Hagen's Wisdom? K. K. The unique Mage Plate. The plus one to all skills, caster rate, hit recovery, and plus energy makes this a pretty solid caster piece. Jumping forward a bit into hour 11 at Nephilahax Temple, out of this completely random chest I found the unique Tabar almost immediately. Storm Rider, which is always an awesome name. This thing is all damage and added lightning. The damage for the casting abilities will come out like so. With the combined damage and lightning castings, this thing will make a heavy melee swinger quite happy. I also found Old Faithful, the set Death Mask. Which we all know is Talrosh's Crest. Plus life and mana, life and mana leech, and a bit to all res, Talrosh's Crest is always a good find. And actually another laying of hands fell. The next hour in the jail, I stumbled across the unique Grim Scythe. Grim's Burning Dead. With plus three to Necro skills, minus 50% target defense, great added fire damage, and fire resistance, a melee Necro is in for a good time? If you say so. Also the unique Crow Bill. Pompey's Wrath which has decent affixes, but that damage won't go very far. It picked up a little in Tristram with the set bassinet. Sazabi's Mental Sheath. With plus one to all skills and some resistances, it's not too shabby of a find. Sticking with Act 1 in the Cold Plains, the set Heavy Bracers fell. Trangul's Claws. Adding plus two to Necro Curses, some caster rate, 
poison damage, and cold resistance, and is actually part of a pretty crazy set. In that same cave level, I also came across the unique war club. Blood Tree Stump. Adding two to all masteries, another three to mace mastery, great enhanced damage, 50% crushing blow, 25 to strength, and all res 20. A great addition for any barb. Also another magic find charm, which is always a plus. Leaping back to the Durance, Mephisto dropped a couple solids. The unique Siege Crossbow. Uh, p uh, p um, uh, Pus Spitter. Which is an interesting weapon leading toward a Bow Necro? On the next round, I found the set Ornate Plate. Griswold's Heart, which kind of boasts most of its usefulness from the sockets. But the Minald Heal Ring also dropped, which is pretty solid for recovery. Interestingly, the Chaos Sanctuary only produced a pair of decent rares. This Hydra Skull catered for an assassin. And an Ogre Maul with plus one to barb skills, but unfortunately no percent enhanced damage. And continuing with bosses in the catacombs, and Dariel dropped the unique Grand Crown, Crown of Thieves, which is pretty solid overall, with life, life leech, mana, dex, and fire res. Mage Fist actually fell with the same drop, which is always a good find for a caster. A decent Nagel Ring dropped on another run. And a solid all res charm on another. But that was all for Indario. And we're keeping with the bosses again, now in Talrosh's Tombs. Being navigation here absolutely sucks as a short and sweet two runs for Duriel. To which he only produced a Ravenfrost ring, which is a pretty good ring though. Cold Absorb is absolutely S tier. The real banger, however, dropped from a rando. The unique Cedar Staff. Chromatic Ire, an absolute beast of a staff, which includes plus three to sorcerer skills, plus one to cold, fire, and lightning mastery. Caster rate, up to 25% max life, and all resistance up to 40. Mega solid find. But unfortunately, that was the last good item for a while. The Forgotten Tower produced a barb skilled Ogre Maul, and a Heavenly Stone with plus one to all. Pendle dropped a Paladin-specific Hyperion Shield. And this crazy random magical plus three Assassin Tiara. Plus one Paladin skills Luna. And hey, a Lem. Hour 24 will end it all with a damage dealing rare Naga. And the set Cantor Trophy. Train Wool's Wing, which is the second of its set I found in this session which includes plus two to poison and bone skills, some defense, and fire and poison resist. So, there was a pretty solid amount of treasure that dropped in these 24 hours of Nightmare Terror Zones. 
Let's quickly highlight some of the best. Starting with the rares, there were a few decent pieces with the plus to skills, including the better of the Ogre Mauls, the Hydra Skull, the Heavenly Stone, and I was quite surprised with the plus three Magical Tiara. All of the set items were mostly pretty great for their respective builds or classes. But if I had to narrow it down to three, I'd say Talrosh's Crest, Sazabi's Bassinet, and Trang's Cantor Trophy. The uniques, though, were the real bread and butter. There was a solid amount of good in here. Armor Finds came out with the Mage Plate and the Grand Crown. Swingers are walking away with the Yari, the Tabar, the War Club, and maybe the Grim Scythe. Casters would definitely benefit from the Divine Scepter and the Cedar Staff. And everyone can benefit from the trinkets with Geed's Charm, Manald's Ring, and the Ravenfrost Ring. So it seems the answer to my original question is yes, you can indeed find some worthwhile items in Nightmare Terror Zones to, at least for a little while, take into Hell Mode. But feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you grind Nightmare Terror Zones? And what are some of the better items you've ever come across? If you enjoyed this run through, consider hitting that like button. And remember to subscribe for more fun Diablo and other gameplay analytics. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Adios.